Today we're going to talk about how to sketch a direction field, and then we're going to talk about how to sketch a solution through the direction field that passes through a particular point. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equation y prime, or the derivative of y, is equal to y minus 2x, and we've been given the point 1, 0. Now, I've already taken a sketch of the direction field here because I want to show you guys what it looks like so that you can visualize the final product as we work through the problem, but we'll still work through and tell you how to sketch this. Basically, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your equation is for y prime in terms of y and x. We need an equation for y prime in order to sketch the direction field because remember that y prime represents the derivative or the slope of our equation y. And the direction field is nothing more than the slope sketched at lots of different points. So each of the lines in this direction field represents the slope in that area. So all we want to do when we need to sketch a direction field is solve our equation for y prime if it isn't solved for y prime already. If you don't have y prime anywhere in the equation, you may need to take the derivative, you may need to solve it for y and then take the derivative of y to get y prime and make sure you're solved for y prime. But once we've done that, then we just need to decide which interval we're going to be sketching our direction field on. This is no exact science, but usually you start with the origin and work your way out to the left and right and up and down. So in this case here, we set up many little tables. And in this first table, what we're going to do is find the slope all along the y-axis. You notice that we have the x value here set to 0 for all of these points. Basically what we're doing here is we're saying at the point for this first combination here, we're saying at the point 0, negative 3, the slope is something. And then here at the point 0, negative 2, the slope is something. And then we're going to plot each of those slopes. So for example, this first one, 0, negative 3 here, we plug in 0 for x and negative 3 for y, and we get a value for y prime. So when we plug in negative 3 for y here, we get negative 3 minus 2 times 0, or just negative 3 minus 0. Well, that of course is going to be negative 3, so we put that into our table, and then we move on to the next one. So negative 2 minus 2 times 0 is just negative 2 minus 0, or negative 2. And if you keep going here, what you'll notice is that since our x value is always 0, the second term is going to go away, leaving us just with the y term. So we're going to get negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. In other words, values that match our y value here. So then, once we have values for y prime, we can plot little lines that represent the slope at this coordinate point. So at the point 0, negative 3, our slope is negative 3. So if we find here 0, negative 3, this point right here, and we draw a little line with slope negative 3 through that point, what we get is this line here, which we've already drawn, but we would be drawing this from scratch with none of the other lines in this direction field and building it gradually. So then we see here at the point 0, negative 2, we have a line with slope negative 2. So we go 0, negative 2, and we have a line with slope negative 2. Then we go to 0, negative 1, and our line has slope negative 1, so it's getting a little more gradual, the line, each time. The slope at 0, 0 is just 0, so that means we have a flat line like this. And then at 0, 1, we have a positive slope for the first time, 1. At 0, 2, we have the slope 2, so it gets a little steeper. And then at 0, 3, we have a slope of 3, so even steeper still. And so we would sketch each of those lines like that. Then we could go and move to the value x equals 1 and fill out the same chart again. So here we'd plug in each of these points. We'd plug in negative 3 and 1. We'd get negative 3 minus 2 times 1, or in other words, negative 3 minus 2, and that would give us negative 5. Notice that since the x value is always 1, we're always going to be subtracting 2 here for the second term. So we have negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and then you start to see the pattern here, and this is going to become negative 2, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And then we'd go back to our direction field and we'd plot those points. So at the point 1, negative 3 here, which is 1, negative 3, we have the slope negative 5. At 1, negative 2, we'd have the slope negative 4, like this. At 1, negative 1, we'd have the slope negative 3. 
like this. And then at one zero, we have a slope of negative two. You can see it's starting to become more gradual. At one one, we have a slope of negative one. And then at one two, we have a slope of zero. And at one three, we have our first positive slope of one. So we plot that like so. So you just continue to work through your direction field in this same way, and you'd make your next chart for x equals 2, and then x equals 3, and then you'd do x equals negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 at each of these values for y, negative 3, all the way through positive 3, and you'd sketch your direction field in that way. Now, if you don't see a clear picture of your direction field starting to emerge, you may want to take smaller intervals. So for example, you could consider, as we've sketched over here in the direction field, taking intervals of 1 half. So not only have we sketched lines for the integers 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., but we've also sketched them for 1 half, 3 halves, and 5 halves. So you could leave yourself some room and consider filling in more lines, which will give you a more and more accurate picture. In other words, the smaller intervals you take for both X and Y, the more accurate a picture you'll see of your graph. Now, in this case, once we've finished sketching our direction field, if we've been given a point and asked to draw a solution through the direction field that passes through that point, all we need to do is find this point, plot it, and then follow the small lines that we've drawn that compose our direction field to sketch the solution. So what we would do is find the point here, 1, 0. So we'd come out here to 1, 0, and we'd plot this point. And now we're just following our curve. If we look at the line in our direction field that passes through this point, 1, 0, you can see here that the slope is negative 2. So if we just follow that line, we see that the slope is a little bit more gradual, so we start to taper off a little bit. And then as we get to our next point here, come close to our next point here, 0, 1, we see that the slope is positive. It's changed direction, so that means that we need to head down again following the slope of that line. This is an imperfect science a little bit when you're just trying to sketch a solution through a direction field and you don't know exactly what it looks like, but you're just trying to follow the lines that are around it. So, you know, we're following this line and then we see here the graph starts to level out a little bit. This next line here that we're being sent toward is a little flatter. So maybe we go a little bit flatter like this. And this line here that's been drawn is the exact solution, but what we'd see, what I'd probably do to sketch the solution is this looks a little flatter to me. You know, I might draw something like this, and as you can see, it's going to get steeper here, but that would approximate the exact solution. Coming down here, we can see that the graph is going to get steeper and drop off here because these slopes get steeper. And I might draw something like this that comes down steep like this and approximates the exact solution that passes through the point one zero. So that's how you use the information that we've been given, particularly the equation for the first derivative and a point to sketch the direction field and a solution that passes through a particular point within the direction field. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.